This car is a 1986 yep. CRX SI, weighs under 2,000 pounds, yep. and uh, it was not this particular model, but this was Honda's most fuel efficient model back when it came out, 50 miles per gallon with the HF. The HF, yeah. And uh, this particular one was an SI, which was about 102 horsepower, what was no, it? No, 91. Ooh, 91 horsepower. Up from the 76 horsepower from right. the carbureted version. <laughs> We're doubling the horsepower. We're going for over 200 horsepower with a K24A2 JDM spec motor. Yep. Welcome to VTEC Academy. You're about to get school. All right, I'm here with Vic Malcheski. Hey. Oh, that's right. I always do that. It's all good. <laughs> I I've always, only I always leave the, after you. I I, no, I always leave the L out for some yeah. reason. <laughs> There's enough consonants I try to put it, in there. I put it. I try to put it elsewhere. <laughs> Malcheski, Vic hey. Malcheski. Yeah, we've known each other for 22, 24 years. Yeah, for quite a Since while. Mid 90s. Yeah, mid 90s. So, what's interesting is this particular car is just OG. It so, is. yeah, <laughs> you raced uh, regionally in autocross. Yep. Uh, with the EW motor, which had 70 horsepower? What no, was that? 90, well, that one, yeah, I mean, they were 91 stock. 91 I, stock built, right. I built a motor that was balanced, blueprinted, tried to get everything I could, did, um, did a um, single, uh, I think it was Doug. Oh, yeah, had, had that the big throttle body. Big throttle body from a prelude. So we yeah. tried to squeeze every ounce of power we could out of the thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it probably made a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but then, then we put a B16 in it. In yes. fact, this was way back in the day, sport compact car ran a series of, uh, of magazine articles called, called Hybrid How To. In fact, that's kind of what put Hasport on the map because they had wanted to do B series swaps into cars for years and none of the local shops in California want to cooperate because they were all competing against each other and really didn't want to share the information. So after a year of bothering Dave Coleman at Sport Com Compact Car, he agreed to let me do swaps. So yours was one of three swaps we did one weekend. And that's what's crazy. We did three swaps in one weekend. So and you we, didn't have big lifts. You were using those little scissor lifts. Yeah, the snap on scissor snap lifts. Snap on scissor lifts. So <laughs> we did a B16 in this. We did a ZC in Sterling's uh, white Civic hatchback, 86, yep. seven hatchback. It was 86. Also. 86. And then we also did a, a B16 with hydro, with a cable transmission, I think in a 92 Civic. I think that was the third one. I think it was. So uh, we did these swaps. So this car uh, is from way back in the day, hybrid how-to. It showed the mounts, how to do the wiring, and by the way, this is the first mount kit that I engineered. Up until that time, we had been a seller of somebody else's mount kits. And I decided to develop a mount kit. So I did the one for the B16 in your car. And then, of course, by the time the article came out, we were making them for H22 swap for, and, and B16 swaps and EF and all that sort of stuff. But and this, this was like everything you needed to know about the swap, like the knuckles are in there. Yeah, these Integra knuckles in order to get axles. We had actually custom short axles made at the time. We decided we were gonna do a K-series swap in this because it was time to, uh, you start doing more track days. Yeah. And uh, you weren't really competing against other lower horsepower cars, so. Yeah, I mean, I was in group A. Um, I, is that, it's funny, after doing autocross for mm -hmm. years and years and over a decade, um, you guys had an opening that you couldn't fill for an, uh, uh, an event and you're like, hey, yep. you want to go do it? I'm like, let's go. So I showed up and I took third place and yep. everybody's like, who the hell is this guy? Um, and I was like, okay. I, they didn't I'm, know you were a shoe. Yeah, well, yeah, they didn't know. You know, it's funny. It's like, I just attacked it like it was a big autocross track. And with autocross, it's all about making every turn perfect, right? And hitting those marks. And so I attacked it that way, even though you know, I had least, the least amount of experience out there right. and it turned out well. And so then it was like, okay, yeah, I got to do more of this. And so I had a lot of top three, I was in group A, mm -hmm. had a lot of top three finishes, never first. I got a, a several seconds and thirds, um, but 
I just got tired of the low torque was just like killing me because I'd have to rev, use RPM to try and make up for the torque. And then mm -hmm. you're shifting mid turn. And as you know, even with an LSD, you're skating then when you're shifting mid turn yeah. and it doesn't work as well. So yeah. we started talking about how do I get more torque? We started talking about a B18, and then you said, you know, the real way to get more torque would be a K series. K24. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we decided to develop a kit. That was a couple years ago, actually. Yeah, like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, there was another guy making them already. Uh, but, yeah. but, you know, clearly I wanted one for one of my cars, and you wanted one, and I think it'll be a good seller. So we're case swapping this car. So to start off with, though, we needed to remove the old engine, and we were trying to remove it as kind of a unit because you're selling it to Neil Coons, who used to be your autocross partner. Yeah, he was kind of like my, national events and stuff. Yeah, he was my mentor. I met him locally, and then we started traveling to San Diego and hitting the, the events down here. And mm -hmm. um, he's kind of since retired, but he's taken the an old the old car that he first started racing. It had the plate that says low CG on it. He's got that car again. It was hacked up. He's restoring it. And he just wants to have a fun street car. And I said, well, I've got a motor that'll make the fun factor high and surprise some people. Because it's going to be a light car. Yeah. Um, it'll be lighter than this um, and because of the chassis that it is. But yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so basically, we, we took it apart with an eye to keeping it all together yep. in order to uh, send it off to Neil. Uh, so the engine was a B16. Yep. B JDM and B16. JDM B16. And what, what transmission was in it? So we've um, so the engine is the 170 horse engine. It was actually OBD1. I just threw the OBD0 uh, distributor back in it, and then it's got the the Y1, the very rare with the gold sticker uh, yeah. transmission because it had the OEM LSD and the short gears, which yeah. was you know I, I autocross yeah I autocrossed with that setup and it was great and tracked with it and it was great so. yeah. In autocross, you're not really shifting a whole lot. No, it's second gear and just stay in second. Exactly, unless third. you're in California. Yes. Where they make big tracks so the Corvettes don't lose the Hondas. Boom. Roasted. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but for road racing, close ratio with that kind of peaky horsepower mm -hmm. was the hot setup. And so you also had a custom radiator in it. Um, yeah, I, I worked with uh, Ron Davis Racing, and we custom made a the the HF style radiator, but a thick version of it, mm -hmm. um, and it it kept plenty cool. It actually, I probably more cooling than it needed because I'd have to sit there in the pits, let it run for, a, run while, for a while, or else VTEC wouldn't work when I hit the the, the track for the first few laps. Yeah. But it, it was a, yeah, it was a good setup, and uh, you know, for a long time up until two thousand. Two December of 2002, that was my daily driver. Oh yeah, I remember that. I, that. That was the only car I had other than another CRX that was a track CRX only, but I drove that every day. So that radiator and setup was, it kept me Worked cool. Worked well. <laughs> yeah. We were never really able to get AC in these cars just because of the tight confines of it. Uh, I would imagine you might be able to with some custom work, but uh, AC doesn't really work that well. The small of a car. So no AC, but yeah, I took, I pulled the AC when it, when I discovered one time there was going to be a, when it had the EW, that the, there was going to be a $500 hose that ran across the front. And I said, yeah, yo, I, I ripped everything out. In the bean. Did you do any other things to lighten this uh, frame? Um, part? you know, not too much. A lot of it was just like, so the rear axle, it doesn't have the SI axle mm -hmm. um, with the torsion bar inside, inside of, it. of it right it's actually got a hf axle with a custom sway bar uh custom torsion bar assembly so it's got the lightweight axle back there did um, you do did you do a disc conversion on this i have the disc conversion and oh, i have that really that cool trailing yeah. arm conversion so that got is it. sitting at the in the garage that's once this is all done uh the case swap's done i'm going to put the disc conversion okay. and those trailing arms on it i think that, the and disc, they'll add a little bit of weight but yeah i think the disc conversion actually widens the back end a little bit too yeah, it'll widen it a quarter inch on each side. Each side, okay. Um, but it's well notice when there's two 45s in the front and two 25s so in, the in the rear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so let's kind of just review everything that was came out of the car. So, uh, complete B16, which you converted to OBD zero. Yeah, because it was always OBD zero. The original motor was OBD right. zero, and I just. Oh, that's right, because originally we bought an OBD-0 B16A right. yep. 
And then the second motor I bought, when the first one grenaded, uh, was another OBDO. And then when that one grenaded, I put, um, the motor I got was the one, the OBD one that was the 170 horsepower right, sure. motor. The one that came in the EG, yeah. B16 EG. So, uh, so I just threw the distributor on and my manifold and right. everything. And okay, so we had the wiring conversion was done by Hasbro way back in the day. So yep. basically you take the SI harness and you add uh, top dead center, the number one cylinder sensor into the distributor wiring. You pull the idle control valve wiring from the box up on the left side back to the idler control valve. Yep. Um, Single wire VTEC. Yeah. I ran a Z Dyne ECU. Yeah. On this, yeah, we use actually a Z Dyne ECU. For those of you who don't know what a Z Dyne ECU is, it was a ECU made back in the day that <laughs> essentially took a uh, 8891SI ECU mm -hmm. and added uh, VTEC to it and also allows you to uh, tune it with a, on a dyno with a computer so you could you know ramp up the fuel and stuff when you turn it on VTEC. Uh, a popular thing back when we did the swap was just simply do an RPM activated switch which really didn't truly do justice to the motor. If you tuned the motor for the v on VTEC, it ran like crap off VTEC. And if you turned it for off VTEC, it didn't get that much horsepower on VTEC, yeah. so. And it wasn't, I mean, it, it had timing and fuel maps, but they were very, very basic stuff. Rudimentary, right. Rudimentary. They're basically, not, nothing like you have what Han data today. Right, um, exactly. But it, it allowed you to get a, a good running engine um, that made right. as much power as it could for what it was. Yeah, it worked well. I think on the OBD0, old OBD0 ECUs, there was actually two fuel maps, one on VTEC, one off VTEC. So that if you were below a certain certain throttle input, it didn't turn VTEC on. I don't know if the Zdyne was able to do that. I think it only had one fuel map, and that was for VTEC. It had yeah. one fuel map for everything, and Got then it. it had your V. You you Thanks. could set your VTEC point uh -huh. uh, in there and control Work. it. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I I had gone through two iterations of ECUs with them. Ended up right before they went out of business, got one of their last ones that actually had data logging. Oh, uh, nice. Another chip added that had data logging. And you could, so you could have your laptop in there and look at live data and log it. it was, oh, that's kind of cool. It, it was pretty cool. And then they yeah. added line launch. So I actually added on this, I took a uh, brake switch, put it on the clutch pedal. Mm -hmm. So there's another switch over there. So with that, uh, and then you had to have VSS. So I took an HF cluster. The HFs, oddly enough, in this generation had VSS in them because it right. was for the shift light for your fuel economy. So the trick is you pull that assembly out and put it in your SI cluster, and now you've got VSS in the dash. And so I ran that to the Zdyne with the clutch cut, and so I had line launch, no. or line lock, or line launch, you know, yeah. just an RPM. So it was good for autocross and for drag racing, and I took it out a few times. Complete engine. The axles are custom because the B16 is quite a bit bigger than the EW that's in there. So the axles are significantly shorter than anything else Honda makes, uh, at least back in that day. I mean, the shortest stuff was 86.9 Integra and they were too long. They were too long, yeah. Yeah, so custom axles for that. Uh, at the time, they were made by um, Swayway, now Hasport makes them. Uh, I think they're probably available also from uh, some of the other axle manufacturers. Um, now, um, and he had to have the knuckles from the Integra and, to go with that. That was a biggie. The biggie we, we don't have, as you're looking at the, the video of everything on the ground, the only thing missing is the knuckles. The knuckles were still uh, yeah, from 86 to 9 Integra, and they're necessary for the larger outer joints, uh, which all the custom, custom axles use. Make sure you find some 86 to 9 Integra uh, outer joints. I think that it's possible that you can buy small joints to run on the stock knuckle if you buy them from uh, the drive shaft shop. But I don't see why, but that axle setup is probably more expensive than buying a set of used knuckles and even putting new bearings yeah. in. Well, and they're, get, they're getting harder to find. Some guys have come up with uh, another solution which is using the, the 2G CRX, second gen CRX hub. hub. And just machining it down? Machining or? it to fit 
into the OEM knuckle. Okay. Because it fits in there in some way. I, uh, on Red Pepper Racing, there's, there's, uh, there's a, a group and uh, they talk about it a lot. And so some guys have done that um, to, okay. to, because they're getting hard to find. Right. So Red Pepper Racing, by the way, is a resource if you're interested in doing the B-swap and eventually if you're interested in doing the K-swap, yep. Red Pepper Racing, they have a Facebook page and do they still have the website? Yeah, the website, we're, we're kind of revitalizing the website. Okay. Uh, years ago, a lot of people, when Facebook became the thing, the problem with the Facebook is you don't have that historical data that you do with yep. the website. And so a lot of guys, it's kind of funny, we've had a new surge of people coming back and you can search back all the way into the 90s information on Red Pepper, the, the, the host, he's kept all of it. All right. And so uh, it's pretty cool that the, all that information is still there. That's good, that's really good. Doing the swap, I mean, obviously the Hasport mounts are, are needed. Um, not sure if anybody, I think uh, Innovative makes them too, but I'm not gonna promote them since I own a Hasport. But- uh, I'm blaming you. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, promote your but brand. But they're there. Uh, and there's one other and- Oh, really? Another? B series one? No, no, sorry, case one. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Another B series choice. So that's yeah, there it. Is. It's just he's awesome got a B hybrid. series too. Yeah. So, oh, he's got a B2 yeah. as well? Okay. Yeah. So, doesn't matter how you get it in there, uh, but <laughs> uh, mounts are required. Um, yep. The engine fits actually pretty nicely. The only modification we had to make to the chassis was. Uh, alternator clearance. Yeah, the frame rail on the driver's yeah, side. The frame rail on the driver's side behind the timing chain cover needed to be relieved a little bit in order for the alternator not to rub. Yeah, um, you gotta run a short belt on the alternator. And, and run a short <laughs> belt, that's true. <laughs> you can't let it slip. Yeah, otherwise you, you have to really put a big dent in yeah. there. So. Yeah. Uh, if I recall correctly, you can put an Integra radiator in there. I think it fits inside. The, the um, eight, the stock radiator worked. The, Except the, the hoses aren't big enough, are, or are no, they? No, no, everything, yeah, everything oh, worked. So for a long time, I ran the, the full length original EW radiator okay. in this, uh -huh. um, but I was just running into A, they were breaking, is there just the quality isn't what, you know, and I was constantly trying to find another one. Right. Uh, and cooling wasn't where I wanted it to be. And okay. the Integra one really isn't any thicker. No, it's Back not. then, it was, so that's why I went with tried to find someone to make one for me. So, so the upper and lower hose uh, inlet and outlet on the engine is inch and a quarter. Is it inch and a quarter mm -hmm. on the? Yeah, it was all. Interesting. Because they, they went to inch and eighth. They went to inch and eighth in 88 and 91. Oh, 88 yeah. and 91. Oh, okay. I don't, we didn't run so any. So didn't have to. We didn't run any adapters or anything on Okay, it. so you just able to bolt it right up. Okay, so you don't need to change radiator. Unless you're tracking, and then you should probably change radiator. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I ran into that issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't an issue on autocross. As soon as I do it, the Road track race. event, that's where it couldn't yeah. keep up. Yeah. And so that's why. And one of the reasons is that the engine bay is really tight, so the radiator sits pretty tight up against the header. Yeah. And I, yeah. I had that my header wrapped to try and help with that, and it did. Um, but yeah, it would even melt the uh, hood latch cable. Oh wow. It would melt the the cable. Interesting. <laughs> I. Part of the problem is the proximity of the engine. It just doesn't allow air to flow as freely, but the heat from the header. I mean, if mm -hmm. you're, you know, as long as you're moving, it's gonna be blown away from the radiator, but if you stop it, heat soaks it so fast. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, I melted through a couple. Yeah, okay. I got smart and put a little reflective sleeve on it. Solved that Solved problem. Solved Never, That's never good. melted another one after That's that. That's good. All right. But yeah, other than that, I mean, it was, it's, it's, and it fits, like you said, it fits well. Um, on the back firewall, you might need to make a little where the fast it, idle valve was. It, you, right, and it depends on what intake manifold you're running. Right. right. Because like the Type R one, totally interferes with the firewall. Yep. But the, the stock. The stock you know, early B16A1, or B16A that came in the OBD0 cars, it cleared. Yep. And then I think, the, I think the one you had, it come back just a little bit further and it, it actually, yeah, yep. the ACV might tap or yeah. come in and you could you could even run the you know the b18s would work but you could not use the um the gsr manifold the, the okay yeah because it kind of lumps out it lumps way out and arcs down underneath yeah. kind of like the k series does today on the tsx style the k24 manifold that comes down like that right the Put gsr the manifold was like that 
but it, it comes out way too far. You couldn't use it. So you'd have to run an ITR uh, manifold, right? Or probably like a skunk one where yep. they modify it to yep. fit the B18C thing. So that, that served you well for years. Oh God, well, we ran, well, we put that motor in in what, 98, yeah. something like that, 99? <laughs> because it was in before the magazine came out. Oh, so yeah. where's the, back here. Well, yeah, it was in well before because you were the second or third one published. So what? We did it all on the same what weekend. What year is this? 2000, 2001. And yeah, we probably did it. was in before it, that. So it was probably yeah. in 99 or yeah. two, mid probably 2000. Probably 99. Might have been early 2000 yep. because they put two ahead of yours and then they put that one in. Yep. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it's been in there for a long time, other than me putting big cams in motors to try and get a little extra power out of them and snapping it's, heads off valves. Um, served me well. I learned very quickly, just stock. Stock, yeah. yeah. And that's what, you know, that was the beauty of this setup. It only made it 148 to the tires, but uh, for A class for uh, time attack, I'm maxed out power to weight ratio. I had to run three quarters of a tank of fuel or else I'm below weight right. and I'm illegal. So it's, that's where you want to be, mm -hmm. max out for your class. It's just, you know, 105 foot pounds of torque doesn't help. <laughs> right. Very good. Even on a fairly light car. Okay, so next time on the next episode, we are going to be preparing the engine bay in order to get our K-series in there. It doesn't fit quite as nicely as the B-series does, so we got to make a few changes. But uh, if you're thinking about the swap, we're going to show you what's necessary in order to get it to fit. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us for this episode of VTech Academy. Please think about liking and subscribing. We are trying to make a little push towards 100,000 subscribers, and we're getting pretty close. Anyway, uh, we'll catch you next week, and thank you very much for clicking on us.